Thank you. Um, my name is Tamar Shapiro, and I'm a seventh grader at Gold Oak Academy in West Orange, New Jersey. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak at this JNF weekly briefing and for giving me the opportunity to speak more about my bat mitzvah project. On March 30th, I was called to the Torah as a bat mitzvah at Congregation Bethel in South Orange, New Jersey, and officially became a full member of the Jewish community. Being part of the Jewish community has always played a big role in my life, and I was very excited to take another big step forward. My parsha was Parshat Sav. It was also Shabbat Para, one of the four special Shabbatot leading up to Pesach. This special Shabbat goes along with Shabbat Shkalim, Shabbat Zachor, and Shabbat Achodesh, and they all have a super long Maftir Aliyot, like the one I studied and read at my Bat Mitzvah. My Maftir for Shabbat Para comes from Parshat Chukat. In this Parsha, we learn a lot about the rituals that are required if one comes into contact with a dead body and therefore becomes tameh, impure. One part of the sacrifice ceremony stood out to me. After you burn the red cow, the para aduma, you add in three plant species, cedar, hyssop, and crimson to the ashes. The Torah tells us, and the priest shall take cedar wood, hyssop, and crimson and throw them into the fire, consuming the cow. But why these three species? I mean, the Torah is not clear on a lot of stuff, so why are they so specific on these three types of plants? Rashi gives us multiple explanations as to the deeper meaning of the species. One of those explanations in particular stood out to me. Rashi explained how the three species correspond to the 3,000 people who died at Har Sinai following the sin of the golden calf. They died because God got so angry at them, he killed them. But wait, the golden calf happened weeks ago. Why are we still talking about it? If this sacrifice is, be, is about becoming Tahor, pure, why are we discussing sins that we have made in the past? I believe that we incorporate this sin into the purification ceremony to remind us that humans are not perfect. The sin of the golden calf illustrates this point by incorporating a sin that the Jewish people made into the purification ceremony. It reminds us that no matter how many sacrifices we make, we will continue to make mistakes and must always remember how to repent for them. Even Adam and Eve, the first people on earth messed up. And today we still make mistakes and that's okay. We carry our mistakes with us, though they don't define us. We are defined by how we move forward and learned from our actions. This comes in both the form of the para aduma ritual and in apologizing and forgiving our friends and family and never stopping when it comes to doing the right thing the next time. It's no secret that the world today isn't perfect either. As much as we want things to go our way, that's not possible. Of course, this is also very true in Israel, a place that I love, have visited twice and have learned about my whole life. It has now been over six months since October 7th, and from then until today, Israel has experienced horrible pain and suffering. So many people lost loved ones, and many still remain in captivity. My heart continues to break for all of them, especially those who I was able to meet and spend time with during Pesach two years ago. During that trip to Israel, we visited the Gaza envelope because of my sister Vered and my cousin Maddie's bat mitzvah project with JNF. For their project, they raised enough money to sponsor the beautification of two bomb shelters, one in Ashkelon and one in Nitzan. We are so fortunate to be able to see both of these shelters and meet with the incredibly talented Israeli artist Eliasov Meira, who created these masterpieces. In Magan, we visited the Groove Tech Children's Center that JNF built in the Eshkol region. This space was built in such a way that in case the rocket sirens go off during or after school, the students have a safe and fun place to go. I love playing soccer on the safe room floor, virtual reality with the special headsets, visiting the planetarium, building on the enormous Lego wall, experiencing the arcade center, and so much more. The people we met there told us that it was worth it to live in this area because life was so wonderful and filled with friends and incredible support 
from all over the world. I met kind and generous people there, like Yedidya Harush. He grew up in Gaza, but now lives in Shlomi. Yedidya and his wife, Shiran, welcomed us into their moshav and served us a delicious lunch. After lunch, we played on their awesome playground. We then went on ATV rides in the desert dunes on the border of Egypt and Gaza. It was so much fun. I had so much fun visiting the Gaza envelope and meeting the incredible people who call this beautiful land their home. After seeing the horrors of what they and their neighbors went through on October 7th, I knew that I wanted to do my part by helping to raise important funds to help them rebuild their lives. For my bat mitzvah project, I worked with JNF to help these incredible people in the Gaza envelope. My original goal was to raise $10,000, but thanks to so many friends and family, we quickly exceeded that goal. As of today, I, as of today, I raised over $15,000. My goal at the moment is to raise $20,000, and I'm happy to keep pushing it up if people continue to support this very important project. Becoming a bat mitzvah has meant so much to me. I was able to put on a talit for the first time that I absolutely love, and I received it from Israel as a gift from my Saba and Nana. It was also amazing to read from the Torah while using the yod that was handmade from olive wood for me by my Saba and Safta. My talit and yod connected me to my family, including all of those who were with me at my bat mitzvah and all of the past generations as well. I feel an incredible connection to all of them and to the Jewish people as I have now taken my place as a full member of the community. Thank you to Russell Robinson, Efra Gilman, Bev Gutterman, and the entire JNF community for inviting me to speak today and for helping to make my Bat Mitzvah project even more meaningful thanks to this project. And because I really enjoyed the fundraising part, I want to finish by inviting all of you to check out my fundraising page, photos and updates, and of course, feel free to donate as well to help me reach my new goal. Have a great day.